Amen. It's time we start our Sunday school. If you all please stand. We'll go for the Lord in prayer. St. John, or no, after the book Acts.
when nobody's looking at this thing. <laughs> you all gonna sing? What are we singing this morning? Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. More than you ever
want to learn a new one? Sister Ruth, do you know he's got the whole world in his hand? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good to see y'all this morning. I'm trying to find a night that I can get back here. Let me see what we're see you, brother. Thank you. Well, I'm happy for you. Now, listen to what Sister Ruth says. Oh, I've got this. You can let me. She's going to teach you a new one. So, we don't like the B-I-B-L-A. Now listen to what she said. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole
Lord's will. How many would do that? Do I, want to do I see all the children. Children are ready. It's the parents. It's uh, our son. Our son. Are you rubbing your chin or was you blowing tears? I was watching. <laughs> Make sure you're here every Sunday. This will be the first thing we've had. In. Sister, can you? Six years. So the children, we'll, we'll get everything straightened up. Get your lines picked out. We'll get Brother Bishop and Brother Tim to, to do the scenes and all that for us. So. <laughs> They're back our second weekend. <laughs> get Brother George involved and get some of the parents involved. Don't forget, don't forget Justin back here. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 that's all you all. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got no dog in that. <laughs> all right, if you will, those that will go with Sister Ella and Sister Carissa down the street. Uh, oh, no, come here, little. We said come here. Yeah, you guys say that? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank God for Brother George. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. You said, hold up, be a man preacher. Let me say that. Everybody bow your head. All right, start us out. Sticking up there, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got it taken care of. That's all matters. So if you've got your Bibles this morning, I told a lot of you. Let's go to Romans, the first chapter. We're going to leave Psalms just for a little while and, and, and take some of these in Romans. Hopefully, we'll get through the chapter. Mama Grace says if we don't leave Psalms, we ain't ever going to get to know what the book One verse a, a Sunday, so. <laughs> but that's all right. That, that, that's, that's how we get understanding of the Word. I never did like to rush into it because the Word of God is a serious, serious book to, to read and to understand. All right, let me start us out this morning. Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophet in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made with seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience in the faith among all nations for his name among whom <clears throat> ye are also the, the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be sons grace 
to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First I thank my God my God for Jesus Christ for all for you all and your faith is spoken of throughout the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, the oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but what is let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am better both to the Greek and to the barbarous, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are wrong also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth. To the Jews first, and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, and hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncreable God into an image made like corruptible man. <coughs> man and two birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the love of their own hearts to dishonor the bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile afflicts affections, for even their women did change the nature, the natural use, unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, Firm in their lust and toward another man. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in, them, in themselves that recompense of their error which was made. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave, hang on just one second. <laughs> God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitted, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness,
Covetedness. relationship and downtime with Jesus Christ actually talking we're drawing near and close to God now your worship is your service and your works and what you're doing as far as the kingdom of God is concerned okay brother Bishop is that the way you see it yeah. it, it takes the whole church to worship, to worship. Yeah. And, and that means you got to get this other stuff out of your head if you sit there and you listen and don't, I mean, I know the devil will, will come right in on your back with a saddle strapped to you and talk to you, telling you you're not able, you should have just stayed home, you, you, why? you don't need this, but yet through God we need to learn how to worship. Right. Big surprise people does that. Exactly, you know. If we look at, at how they worship uh, Buddha or, or Mary Magdalene, or, or you would see that they would build them a little louder and they would put put their statues in it, and and to them that is their god. Right. But I, I don't know about you. I don't. I can't look at uh, something that man's created and, and claim it to be my god when I know in my heart that Jesus Christ is alive. And if Jesus is alive, that means God the Father is still the Creator, and He is. But how do you break down prayer and worship? Until we can learn how to do these two, we're, we're kind of at, at having none of faith. Well, whenever it comes to your prayer, you need to be praying what is within God's will whenever it comes to His plan for things. You know, we get so caught up sometimes, you know, being selfish in our prayers that we forget, you know, what God wants as far as His plan for our life and you what know, goes. Mama Grace said, said it. She said, our worship starts with our prayer. Because I know you've been praying in your closet and, and you start out praying and then the Spirit comes by and then you begin to worship. It's no longer about what's troubling you, what's, what's happening, what's going on in your life. Because Jesus knows these things. And hey, Richard, I've often wondered how anybody wants to be a doctor and sit back and listen to somebody complain all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I wouldn't if I could. But you know, I wonder sometimes how God gets tired of us just coming and just complaining and complaining and, and begging and complaining. Well, that, that she said something there. Should we have to beg God? No. 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 We ought to praise Him more than. If we truly, you really, I know there's situations that you come by prayer and believing. But if you don't believe and ain't got the faith and you pray, it, is it working? Can it work? You're just stuck in a systematic, pointless routine because your so, heart's not in it. Would you say that our church is, has got caught up in this routine? Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of them sadly have. It's 
coming. They know what's going to happen when they when six o'clock rolls around. What we do? We all know it. It's sometimes unless we're up here singing and the spirit of God has its way. But yet we've got to have a starting point. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to get. You've got to have a starting point into this worship. I like how mom said it starts by prayer, but then it leads to worship. You're talking about starting points and foundation. I think something that's really important to throw out there adding to the whole aspect of worship. Whenever it comes to worship, are we fully submitted? <laughs> so if you're double-minded to anything, it's going to be unstable when from the get-go. When takes over, you are submitted. <laughs> yeah. well, when you get caught up in the Spirit, I, I, I like Paul because he gets caught up in it also, but I, all the rest of them do. But in your worship, you can't do it with your mind. You have to do it with your heart. Right. Yeah. You have to have, and I know each and every one of us has had an experience in our walk with Christ that there's no way we could doubt what God could do. Well, it goes back to the first of the two great commandments of Jesus Christ, you know. Worship, loving, you know, the Lord with all your heart, all your might, and all your strength, and your whole soul. So, so now we've learned that, that by doing meal, we can gain grain of getting to the worshiping part. How would you see worship, Brother George? <laughs> he, he, he's got a look in his eyes like he's, he's thinking. It. <laughs> but until the church learns the prayer leads to worship. Well, can you worship if you've got your mind on something else? Exactly. No. 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 How can you have a true heart if your mind is separate? What if your heart's not in it, but your mind is? Still won't work. Did anybody have any other questions? I, I just that worship stood out to me. And man, I've got it marked off. Verse one. Paul says, "Paul, as a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel." Of God. That sounds like a silo, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We all can relate to that. We all were called. What do you mean? You have to be called to come up and pray and get salvation. That had to be a calling in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, anointing is something different. That's right. Mm hmm. I believe in one point we'll read where he says some he called to teach, some he called to, to evangelize, some he called to pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, we can, we can get caught up in the ministry of Christ and the callings that are within them. Some people are called to be a witness on the street. Some people are called to be a witness. Some people are, are called to be that bold one that goes up without that knowing anything and all of a sudden mention Jesus. Uh, there's a calling in, in clothing. There's a ministry in food, a uh, giving food out. We can go all day long on talking on the ministry that Christ has got for us. But what good is it if we don't use it? Would we be like the one that had the talent and took it and hid it? And when Christ come back, could we say, why, we thought you was a stirred man and, and if we didn't have it, you, you would surely kill us? And he said, I'd rather through you abused it than to hide it. God gives you gifts and certain talents for a reason. And they're and used to glorify, to glorify him and, and draw men to him. And, and a lot of it is some with knowledge, some with wisdom, some with understanding. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't have the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge to go with it, it all comes in one thing. It's called the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You got it when you got up here and you pray. When you open your Bible, when you, how many know that when they stopped, first started out and they read a couple of scriptures and man, they just could not see what the Word of God was trying to tell them. And then all of a sudden, it said, read a little further or, or, or back up and read it. And, and you read and it opened your eyes up. Hurry just a little longer and go that extra mile. <laughs> Now we're, we're lucky to get people just to come. Yeah. We're blessed. This little church is blessed. On Sunday mornings, it, it's unreal. I'd love to see them all Sunday night. I'd love to see all of them Wednesday night. But I can't, and all I can do is encourage you to come. If you don't do it on your own, I can't do it. We can tell you how much you're missing out on and what you're not getting to, to feel or to see and, or to hear the word of the Lord. It, that alone is, is a miracle these days. Right. Does anybody else got any? No. Boy, I'm glad you were talking that baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think something interesting there on verse 3 concerning the Son Jesus Christ the Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead which before that he was talking about the Holy Scriptures uh -huh. Christ referred to three things in the Old Testament whenever it comes to things concerning him, the volume of the book being about him talking about the writings of Moses the Psalms and the Prophets you can go all the way back to Genesis 3.15 where it started. And then you see uh, the suffering servant which we talked about there in, uh, Wednesday briefly in Psalms 22 and Isaiah 53. Uh, another really good one, I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 18 where Moses tells them a prophet unto the like of him would come up out of the brethren. But... So the whole reason why I bring that up, you know, um, do we really, really know the scriptures? Do we search them whenever it comes to the things that, you know, was there? Showing that Christ was that seed, that Son of God, the Word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Boy, that, that... If, you read, if you read your Bible, it's like I didn't know what, where y'all was going to be at today, so I, I was reading the Psalms 22. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to read the prophets. I'll tell you something that's going to happen way out yonder somewhere else. Jesus, when he when he took the sins, the filthy low down sins of every human being on himself, I, I just, you know it, it just I cannot my mind. Just, when I know he did, but it's just more than you can comprehend that the Lord Jesus Christ, he paid the price for every sin I've ever done, and I ain't worthy. No, I'm not. Neither is anybody else, really. Exactly. We're not worried We're about not. what the Lord has done for us. He paid a debt that we that we owe. I tell you what, it'll sure, it'll sure get to you. When I mean, I, I told y'all a couple of Sundays back, I, were, I remember my dad, he died when I was eight years old, but dad had a little garden out from the front porch, and he'd go out and get that old mule, or whatever you call the thing, and he'd get plow to it. And that thing would start pulling, and that plow would get down into the ground. Next thing you know, it was just... That dirt was just going like this when you would have a big ditch there. That's what they did to his back. Now we are And we begin our men's meeting that's on every third Wednesday at 5 o'clock for those of you that can't tell time or can't remember. Uh, we got in on that prophecy. And, and we, you look at, at all the old prophets in the Bible, when they prophesied that, that Jesus Christ was coming, uh, people couldn't comprehend it, Brother Justin. They, 
They just could not see how a man could come and take the sins of this world up on him and survive. But he didn't survive. He had to go by the grave and will go by the grave if the Lord will. I know he said there'll be some faith standing. But on that day when he come up out of that grave, that changed. That was the change. Death wasn't the change. It was the resurrection that changed. And that goes back to the Holy Scriptures thing concerning Christ because the resurrection and burial of Christ is mentioned at least that I know of two times. talks about uh, not allowing the, uh, the Holy One not to see corruption. And I think it's in Hosea chapter 6 and 2 talking about the second. On the third, he'd, he'd be brought back up and raise them again. I got a question for you, Brother Justin. I believe that it was, I think the sister read it. And that's for all of you, just not. What is a reprobated mind? Do you understand what a reprobated mind is? It's whenever you get to the point where you have no conscience where it comes to, you know, guilty, guilty. You know what I'm saying? It's a, I'm trying to put this in terms where it's not going to go over somebody's head. You, you completely lose a moral compass of what's right and wrong. You have no remorse. No remorse whatsoever for what you do. You don't worry about the consequences of your actions. You just go on, not even thinking of the, the, the repercussions and damage that you may cause in, in your work. Well, I've got another for you, church. Are you seeing that today? Yeah. Yes. How do you know for certain when it's somebody, now it may be in your own family, hmm? That he's turned to a reprobated man. Now listen, there's another part into it. He said, I'll turn you over to a reprobated man and I'll pardon you. If I turn you over to a reprobated man, there's no hope for you, are there? No, there's no hope. There's no repentance. I mean, it, because you're, you're like Brother George and Brother uh, Justin said, <coughs> You don't, you don't care if it's right or wrong. You don't even have a conscience anymore at that yeah. point. It says their conscience is seared with a rod of hot iron. When, when they kill the, kill the baby or, or throw it in a garbage can, they ain't got no feelings to them. They've not got no conscience of, I left that thing helpless. It can't feed itself. can't clothe itself. No feeling, no emotion of anything. And they don't even shed a tear. Dead inside. Twice dead, plucked up by the root. Wells without water. Wandering stars. I mean, we can go <laughs> on and up and, and it's fitting the days we're living in. And we're wondering what happened to the church. The church is alright. It's the people that's went from crazy. They have lost the focus of our, what God put us here. What did he tell us to be? Tell us to be a light. A saw of the world. So if we're a light, then we're not going to be like some, something else that's happened. Mm -hmm. no. no. Well, we don't partakers of it either. You, you want to uphold it. You want to allow it in your home. You want to allow it in your vehicle. You, want, you, you just don't want to see nothing concerning sin around you. I think one thing that we've been guilty of, and I, I'll admit in times past that I've done it, we're not really being separated and sanctified like God's called us to be. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be a strange and peculiar people separated and sanctified onto Him. We're supposed to eschew the very appearance of evil. You know, if you, if you sit there and condone it, you might as well be partakers of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother Bishop, would you like fixing the saints up? Oh, did I cut Brother Bishop no, off? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> so I was listening to him. <laughs> I get caught up listening to that. It's amazing that what Justin's got, you could have it too. Yeah. He loses me sometimes. He's got it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's good. Huh? Where did he get it? God yeah. Did, he? How did it come by? Study and faithfulness to God. I think that's a lot of it. I'll, I'll, I'll humbly admit, um, when I 
got um, rededicated a few years back. I stayed in this book like for hours, and I've slacked on it really bad. I, I need to get a burning desire to get back into studying the Word of God. But you ain't. It, it's, it's really a shame how how much I have not actually read here in this the past few months, and it's not for lack of trying. And it goes back to you know not not getting our focus took off, actually making an effort to be fully dedicated and in submission. We're yeah. not only, you know, ambassadors of the faith, but, you know, we're servants of God. He, exactly. he bought us and purchased us and redeemed us. We're not supposed to be a slave to sin, a servant of sin, no more supposed to be a servant to righteousness. You know, I find it, it, it harder every day, Brother George. It seems like time goes by so quick. Mm -hmm. and, and if you, you work, if you've got a job, or you're so tired, I, I said, "Have my body be aching," mm -hmm. and the, the Lord be saying, "You might need to read this." And while all that He's doing is trying to prepare me for what may come. Right, I, I get so tired sometimes when I come home. If I sit down more than two minutes, I'm gone. That's how tired I get. And it, and it used to be not that way. I don't know if it's age or. <laughs> what it is that's coming on us. <laughs> Something I am trying not to let happen is things distract me and throw me off. That's Amen. one of my biggest things. I will try to get into the Word, and next thing I know, about 50 million distractions and hindrances <laughs> is just popping up. And by the time I try to sit back down and get yep. refocused, I'm done. I've done throwing all out, all out of whack. <laughs> so we're blessed if we can get 30 minutes in the Word of God. And why is that? I think that Satan is oppressing the Christian people mm -hmm. so strong. Mm -hmm. You got to look. You don't own this world. Mm -hmm. He gave it to the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, there's a reason why he's called the God of this world and prince of this world. Exactly. He gave it. You're, you're, you're an enemy on his land. And knowing that, that he can't touch you because you've got something covering you. Mm -hmm. Something greater than man could ever have. Even the angels in heaven can't even have what you got. Something interesting about what you said there. Now, we can get into some real, real deep things. <laughs> we'll just, just for the current dispensation we're in, we lost the deedship to this thing in the garden. Exactly. He is the I God of this it. world <laughs> right now. But when Jesus Christ comes back and sets things back into the proper order and place, the kingdom of heaven and God is going to come on and it's going to be established here on earth when we have the new heavens and earth. One day, uh, uh, Brother Joseph, that's why he's That's why he's working so hard right now to disrupt things because he knows he's got a short time and pace to continue on with what he's doing. Demonic activity and, and stuff like that, things whenever it comes to the, 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 the mystery of iniquity, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ramp up because we're getting closer and closer. I'll put it to you this way. If you're not praying for the Lord to watch over you, you better stop. Amen. Yep. Brother Richard over in 2 Thessalonians, he talks about only he who now let, will let till he be taken out of the way. And there's a lot of things I don't understand about God's words. So if y'all think I'm wrong, this way, it's deep. No. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe that that gate, as I call it sometimes, is the Holy Spirit. We're fixing to see some things happen. Yep. Yeah, we are. And he pulls that. I believe, I believe the church will be gone when, when that, that, that is pulled back and this that evil come in like this world has never seen. Right now, we know that this world is evil. Oh. But let me tell you something. See who now lets will let till he's taken out of the way. When that is taken out of the way, you talk about flooding with evil like we ain't never seen or could even understand. I think you want to go back to that. Yeah. I was thinking about when Brother Justin was talking about the secret word there, I think, is this but that everyone's going to disrupt everything that we Yeah. We get up in the morning and our and teach us our pray I which I do anyway, you know, and we all need, as soon as our, our feet hit the floor or our eyes open, start thanking God, rest being thank God that we have another day, and His presence is with us. I thank God, not because I have another day, but I thank God because His presence is with me. 
I don't know where that presence is. I don't have a call on it. And we need to and he and we need to pray and not let disruption come in our life. Disruption will destroy us and yeah. we'll let it just I don't know why I'm trying to say exactly, but anyways, disruption it is uh, it comes like a, a pride. Uh, well, I've got to get this done, Lord, first. That forgive me, Lord. No, don't do that. When he says go pray, you better go pray because he wants yeah. to talk to you about something. You know, a lot of people says, "Oh, we got to have electricity to have to worship God. No. We have got to have this in our home. We got to have this." <laughs> And I thought about where he said in history and, and where he said it in the Word of God about it repeating itself. There's no new thing under the sun. What once was will be again. And we're living in some times that we may see a big portion of that go back. Yep. Could you imagine what it's going to be when it does? It's like the days of Noah, just like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, days a lot. Would you say that they will be people committing suicide more? Oh, yeah. 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 They already are now because of the yeah. lunacy these people have created. Chaos they've done. Demoralizing people. And you know what gets me is is the world points at the church. Yeah. Like it's the church's Bible. Mm -hmm. Like that old song, Mother read the Bible by the coral of light. <laughs> we might, don't throw them out of your home. I'll put, put it to you that way. <laughs> Collect them. It's coming. When we had that flood in 77, uh, we was out of Laker for three weeks. And I went out in the front yard, which thank God we're back in the country anyway. And I put me some rocks up here and went in the house and got my rack out of the oven. And I fed my family there with fried bread, soup beans, fried potatoes. They ate. It would not have been, the, you know, whatever. But God supplied. And But now how many people, we well, might be in a place where you couldn't do that. But how many people in a place like that is going to set their mind because you ain't no electric? I'm glad y'all brought this subject up because when I was walking out here this morning, I ran into a friend and we was talking about the real possibility that we may actually have to resort to where it's not going to be about a building, it's going to be about a body of believers coming together. Exactly. And that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. Are we really going to be able to have to go underground? To continue well, worshiping. You, you know, know the Bible as much as I do, and you know that he said you'll flee to the mountains, that you'll desire to have a day in the house of the Lord. What they consider under the under world underground church for China right now, they've been uh, yeah. many times, and and the the one dude I'm not going to shouldn't get into that, but anyway mentions. You know that he's going to be bringing in these kind of people that live in every level of his government, and these are the people. If you say you serve God, they'll kill you. Yeah. But you're going to put them in a. Never mind. I'm sorry. They'll they'll try to regulate what can and cannot be said behind the pulpit at yeah. this point. Yeah. They're, they're already. And if you do not hold to this. And if you don't compromise with them, they will try to shut us down at this point. Exactly. So what I'm trying to say, you know, they are people over in China that are already suffering the persecution of that. They have Christians, Buddhists, Islam, all in death camps because, you know, they will not compromise on their faith. No. And you have got... We've got it here in America, Justin. And it's coming. It, it, it's, uh, I don't know when, here. I don't know how soon, but it will come. So the question is, are we going to be able to stand on this rock, this foundation, and be non-compromising to the Word of God? Somebody read. It's really weird, though, to think about it, that right now the exact same things that people are the thieves and robbers are fighting for is for everyone to be able to have their own freedom. Exactly. Right. So to think that we would all in some time in the future be under one yeah. the <laughs> force of belief, that's kind of, that's hard to believe, but it can happen. Yeah. And then though, right now everybody's going off the promises of their own freedom to do what they want. That's what everybody's fighting for. Because you can't, 
you know, you can't say you, you, that you're this or you're that or you're a Christian or you believe this or believe that because that's going to offend somebody else. Exactly. So yeah. everybody is allowed to do what they want right now. So right now really is a more of the, the most freedom that's ever exactly. been given. Exactly. How long is that going to last? Exactly. He said for two or three is gathered together, he's in the midst. If it comes to that where there's two or three, he's in the midst. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I will go with you all the way. That is the very reason that he tried to tell you in the Word of God, writing upon the tables of thy heart. My sister was telling me that her, uh, that last time she married, it's a, uh, her husband's sister. And uh, she said that girl told her a couple days ago, said, I'm going out in the backyard and dig me a hole and bury my Bible because, you know, something, they going to come take our Bibles away. You know, something, when that Word of God is in your heart, they can't take it away. Exactly. So Spirits will say, call for remembrance and utterance. Stop me from praying. When you see Scripture at work, that's what I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. the Word of God, the Scripture, yes. at work, seeing it being happening just the way it's said. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's running from my head yes, and my Lord. toes. And we're witnessing that today. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're true witnessing the handworks of God. And some don't even recognize it. Some don't even hate to it. There'll be a day they'll open this door and that flood in like a flood of a raging river. And it won't do no good. Yep. We have got something that we can, we ought to take care of. And it's up to us to take care of. We can just let any old thing go on and, and, and go on about it. Or we can say, no, this is what the Word says. Don't ever give them what you say. No. Give them what the Word says. I used to think you needed to have it in your memory. No, it don't have to be in your mm -hmm. memory. It has to be in your heart. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you read and study and love God and try to live the very best that you can for Him, if you need a scripture, I believe that Holy Ghost will bring it back. Mm -hmm. Bring it right about to memory and utterance. A couple years ago, and, or more than that, really. And the Holy Ghost has kept talking. The Holy Ghost was doing the talking. I went and he said, Mama, I said, I didn't know you know that and memorized that many verses. I said, honey, you need to listen. I said, what you're hearing right now is the Holy Ghost bringing back to you what you need to listen to. Exactly. But if you never picked your Bible up, no. how could it be revealed to you? Yeah. That's right, man. That's the reason I guess I, 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 I speak so much on reading your Bible and studying it. Get caught up in in. in and topics. If you don't know the Word of God for what it is, it's really easy to be deceived and yeah. misled. And brother, you're seeing a lot of it. A lot of it taking place. What is going to happen when that president dies? Who's going to be the next? I think that woman will be the first woman president. Her and Flossie. That, that's a scary thought to even. Let's not even get on that side. That's a scary thought. Biden, Biden's going to die. <laughs> he will be the president. Now you mark her down. Yeah. It, it's in. I, I'm like Brother Justin. I've been. That, that's a horrible thing. I don't even want to begin to ponder upon it. Even, even I don't even want to entertain the thought of that. <laughs> if you will, Brother Justin, read us. From verse 29 to 32. 29 to 32. All right. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, and bitter of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. He said, listen, what he said at 13, who knowing 
Knowing mm -hmm. the knowledge of God. They had to listen to it. They, you can't get around in America and say, I never hear of the Word of God. Man dies in America and ends up in hell. That's, that's a shameful thing. Exactly. That's how, how free the Word of God is. Uh, I was thinking there, uh, Joe Biden, Oh, he is a Catholic, okay? But, and I've seen that scripture there too a while ago, who knowing the judgment of God? He knows the judgment of God. Yeah. He's been taught that. But, in the schools he went to and all that, in the, in the Catholic church, they teach you all about this stuff, the judgment of God. When they said it's going to come down to one church, that's what they're pushing for. Yeah. I'm not answering to no man. I'm not kissing no man's ring. I, I, I'm not calling him father when I didn't even call my own dad that. Because I know they was a heavenly father in heaven. I couldn't get over him quoting Ecclesiastes there last night, a time to heal and all this. I'm sitting there hearing that, and I'm like, you know, making a righteous judgment and, and, and discernment observation of it. You know, but I mean, you. I try not to get in this. I mean, that, that right there, I, I, you talk about cringe worthy, man. Cringe. <laughs> of the highest magnitude. Mama Dre. I want to go back to verse 19. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Yep. Not too awful long ago, you remember I told you that. I, I couldn't, when I can't understand the word, I got to call yeah. the church, whatever. And manifest means be made plain. Yeah. You see that word manifest in there? They want you to know plainly what this scripture is talking about. Mm -hmm. And it said, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Mm -hmm. God well, he, shows he, you what he yeah. wants you to know if you listen. Everybody will sooner or later hear God, the Word of God. Yeah. Nobody's going to be able to claim ignorance saying they didn't know that they didn't no, have yeah. a heat or a warning or somebody didn't no, deliver ignorant. the message to them. When over in Revelations chapter 3, he talked, or 2 and 3, he talked about churches. And what I liked is how the angels was in every church. Mm -hmm. And they bore witness of that church. And Christ said, I have somewhat against them. That is some thinking material right there. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what, what all this that Brother Justin had read in verse 29, go home, get you a dictionary. I, I like using a Bible dictionary, the Webster and, and and I like to look. The Strong's Concordance is a good reference uh, yes. also. And, and, and breaking what them words mean. And then looking in the Bible and seeing it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't understand what that word means, you've misunderstood the whole verse. That's the reason what we're, we're have, we have Sunday school like we have. That we all can get a clearly view of what Paul's trying to tell us. We can bring in everything that's happening today into this few words. When he said, when Jesus plainly told you the world first hated him mm -hmm. before it hates you, mm -hmm. how many did he say many will, will die because men say and God told them to do it. Mm -hmm. How many have you already witnessed people saying, I am Jesus Christ? Everything in Matthew 24, it's been unfolding. We, we, we've had it. We've had it in, out in Texas. Uh, uh, there used to be one here in Pennington. Oh. He had long hair. He, thought, he really thought he was Jesus. And he got out here and got drunk on the railroad track and got killed with a train. Sure did. He got his ticket. 
But see, and I know what we had one over in heart, and he would fight you if you argued with you. A lot of people don't believe in Jesus. Long as they something, they're gonna be no atheist in hell. That's right. That's right. Amen. And they would definitely be down on judgment day, because he said that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Brother, if you ever want to get it right, you've got time. You better be getting it right. You better bow and confess on your own will when the Spirit draws you. Because it's a different subject and story, theologically speaking, whenever you're forced to bow and confess that He's Lord of Lords. Do it when the Spirit draws you. Don't be forced. Willingly. Not happen to be forced. Can, can, how do y'all feel about somebody saying that they, the, I'll tell you where I think it comes from. I think they get it from the thousand year back. I think where Christ established his, his kingdom upon this earth, that's where I think that, that, that it relates to. Just, now it could possibly pertain to people being converted and saved during the thousand year millennial reign when Israel is the head of the nations. And it can also be interpreted that the resistance to the one world government and the mark of the beast system, rather than bowing a knee and taking the mark, they'll give up their life and be beheaded. My granddaughter stayed Saturday night with me, and she, and she is where I, the reason I asked that. Uh, I didn't argue with her. I was listening to her. And uh, she believes now, now, right now, we, this is the start of a worldwide revival. Well, people are sinful. I said, I think the Bible said the time would get more evil as yeah. we go along. It don't get better. No, it don't. It don't get prosperous. And here's something else to think of, too, because um, pertaining to the book of Revelations and getting into that subject, you have two witnesses that show up. You have Moses and Eliza preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. <laughs> And you see what they're capable of doing. And the whole world will witness what they're yeah. able to do before they're slain and their bodies are left dead three and a half days in the they'll street. They'll right. even see where God will resurrect them and call them up after being dead for three and a half days in the streets for the entire world to see. Now you got to think people that witness that at that point, <laughs> you know... If, if, if the spirit don't move upon you at that point, there's something bad wrong, and it goes right back to this talking about reprobated carnal mind and it's not having a conscience anymore. There, that, I mean, those are some things to think about whenever it comes to the possibility of that interpretation. Well, let me ask you: What age do you come of knowledge? All right. Different ages. I've been, biblically speaking, I've heard 13 is usually the age of accountability. That's what I've, I've heard. And I, I'm not going to say that's scripturally and biblically 100% true. I got saved when I was 8 years old. I remember some lady, I don't know what, but she said, This is what you say, and you're saved. Bobby, I went to that altar. I mean, I just got up and went. I bowed down and I said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come in my life and be my Savior. Come in my heart, I said, and be my Savior. Let me tell you something. When you accept Jesus and He comes in, you'll know it. Yeah. Well, you know that. No matter what the age. I believe you come of age when you start knowing what you're doing is wrong. Yep. Yeah. Well, when I was going to be baptized and the neighbors kept telling her, you shouldn't do that because she, she don't even know what sin is. Let me tell you something. They still some sin. I know what it is, and I don't want to know. Exactly. You know, I think Teresa brought the subject up. If you have to ask, then it's already wrong. Again. Yeah. I seen a little twelve-year-old boy. He was. Uh, he wanted to be baptized. Well, the doctors made him wear a mask all the time, and told him, said, "Don't you never take it, you know." He said, "No." He said, "I want to be baptized." But took him down there, Frank Lynn's in the bottom there. Cold water, I mean cold water. <laughs> and that little fella pulled that mask on, buddy, walked right down in that water. Now that little fella had to fight. Huh. <laughs> huh? That's something, uh, 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 
that the church is needing more of is faith and trust in the Lord. Amen. Paul told you of all these things and we're done seeing him. You're, you're, you're done in witness. Men loving men. Women loving women. Two men adopting a baby so they can have a child. And they let them do it. I think they was, listen to what happened. They was a young boy over in Harlem. All right? He had two dads. Okay, the, school, the boys in school found out about it. What do you think happened to it? They read on that kid fiercely, probably, to the point where he almost killed himself. They probably, the last I hear it, every time he went, it was a baby. And that's the way I remember it when I grew up. Man, that just goes to show uh, your own personal sin and preference and choices just doesn't affect you. It hurts people around you. But hey, kids having to suffer due to their immorality and reprobateness. But because of that boy's hurt sin, he caught the blame. Yeah. Well, Anderson Cooper had a surrogate. And they had, he had a baby, but he's with a guy, so that child, he had a woman half or him. That was his. He's now being raised by two men. How much sense does that make? It's crazy. Yeah, it, it, they're, it, they're doing everything they can to make a liar out of God to disrupt the natural order of God's creation, exactly. just like it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be. Yes. But, but let's not forget that sin in itself is no bigger than any other. Exactly. No more worse than a man taking a gun and yep. shooting somebody. And it's all the same in the eyes of God. And you allow to see. Small, simple little thing. The, when we get caught up in, in, in the things that are not of God, it'll have an effect on your life. You know, that might the sin might be the same, but we're talking about another person's life. Yep. Not just you uh -uh. sinning, but... Another human life that exactly. you're responsible for is going to pay for what you did. Yeah. But is that not true from the biblical? We pay for what our ancestors did. Yep. Yeah. And, and and they yeah. still want us to pay. And you think we're not going to pay for what our parents did? Our children are going to pay for what we did. Yep. Yeah. The sins are the sins of the fathers are visited upon the generations yeah. that come after. Now when I grow up, if I disobeyed my mom. Or back top her, man, I had blood running out of my lips. And there wasn't no court system you could run to. They would probably say you need to give it to him again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't spare the rod back in the day. No, that's they sure true. did. They and wouldn't the spoil a child at all. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're a dying marine. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's it going to be like when that next generation comes? The more and more you compromise and depart from this, the worse it gets with each passing generation. And the Bible says that. Yeah. 70 times 70. You think all this from verse 29 to 32 ain't happening? You better open your eyes. It's, it's, it's here. It's, it's going on. Everything Paul teaches you and I that how they're, to, they're denying the faith they're up, they're doing it. And you got to think about all the weak and feeble-minded individuals that they've indoctrinated and brainwashed with certain things, getting on the, the whole thing of natural a natural affection. I'm sorry, it's not right teaching you know little kids, you know things that they shouldn't be, you know, exposed to. And I'm not. I hate even getting into the. I'm I'm not even getting into the politics. Let's get behind the spirit of it. Exactly. Now, it's not right to tell little boys that they can be little girls if they want to. Exactly. Changing the it, It's not right to tell little girls vice versa. If they don't want to be girls, they can be boys. <laughs> don't be sexualizing and exploiting kids. That's not, that's not right. There's nothing cool. There's nothing trendy. There's nothing no. progressive about that. That's just straight up satanic, demonic garbage. And, it, and, it's and that, that is long-term affecting, impacting things to the point to where there, there's no recovery. 
no recovery from that kind of mental no. illness being projected onto somebody. It, well, it's no different, like Brother George said, there's no little sin and there's no big sin. But You'll go to hell for life. We're bad for putting sins in order, ranking them from worse to least. I'm by no means trying to rank anything from least to greatest. It's all the same in the eyes of God, but I'm talking yeah. like... We're talking about like prophetically speaking on subject here, you know, vile, unnatural affections, disrupting order the creation of God and stuff. And that's what they're doing. Reprobating this. I mean, if they are, they, what is considered evil is now being rewarded as good in this time and age we're living in. And a lot of people, we, we have dropped the ball on calling it for what it is. Because we're afraid of getting shut down, afraid of being persecuted, Afraid they're gonna like come and shut the, the church down and say you can't because you're not. I mean, they, they label so much stuff where people are, are so triggered and easily offended. That that's that's yeah. the problem. That's why we're why we're at right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to be sensitive to other people's feelings. As far as the word of God's concerned, you know, it's either His way or no way. They ain't no get way your feelings way. and emotions out of it, because that'll get you in a lot of trouble if you go by your feelings and emotions. And won't we have to confess that? Because Jesus Christ sure didn't care to hurt the Sadducees and the Pharisees' feelings there in Matthew chapter 23 at all, whenever he told them what they were. There's one thing you will not have to answer for, and that's for somebody else's sin. I'm talking about the church. The body of church. As the body of Christ. We know in the body of Christ there's many members. There's over 200 bones, I think, just in the hand alone. Okay, uh, I mean, all these different things. But yet, in that hand alone, without one bone being there, it wouldn't be a whole hand, would it? Uh, this is a body. We're part of a body. So we may be just a fingernail on the finger, but yet we're in the body. That Christ is a body. It won't have to answer for itself. It'll show. You're not going to go down righteous and rise unrighteous. You're not going to go down unholy and rise unholy. It ain't going to happen that way. No. It's however you go. And as the body of Christ, we answer for what happens in this church. We answer. More fingers point toward me for it even happened. And more fingers toward our deacons for not stacking up. We well, need to stop playing the blame game and just accept responsibility for what Amen. we fell short. That responsibility. What is your responsibility in the church? To be a part of the body. Mm -hmm. And something I was really trying to emphasize there on real bad. What It's happened. And I, yeah. We've been guilty of it. The friend in the world. We can't be a friend of no. God and friend of the world. It don't work that way. That's, those things are in conflict. He said you can't shut, sit down at the same table with, with Satan and Christ. Light has no fellowship with darkness. There and has to be a rightly divided separation. It's a things. separation point somewhere in that. That answer. Does that child going to have to answer for his Parents sin? No. No. It, 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 it can't answer for it. it, it it's own soul. But listen, this, the Bible said they're changing the very affection of God. And they're doing it. Yeah. It's happening. And people are saying it's okay. We've got churches and pastors saying it's okay if you're a man and you want to go to come in. <laughs> We, we know that's wrong because what? We've been taught. We and it, it goes back to no new thing under the sun. This happened in Genesis. The very it, first thing that, well, okay, the second thing that happened after they made them doubt the Word, destroyed the, the natural order of, of the family the way God created it and set it out to be. I've got a question for you. And I want to see what your answer is. Verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. 
But go up to verse 23. That's funny you said 23. The uncorruptible God into the image made life to the corruptible man and to birds and fast four-footed beasts and creepy things wherefore God also gave them up to be to uncleanliness. Were they uncleanliness when they was being created? Well, I would assume if they were made in the image of God in the beginning, they were made perfect. But... There's the thing. There's because the, they did have a transfigure, yes. a transfiguration, and a glow to them before they fell. But when she was beguiled, partook of that thing, and then he partook of it, something happened to where they lost that transfigured, perfect state. That, that was the unclean thing because they departed from the actual God and served the wrong God. Exactly. They listened. They listened to the wrong God. Always in deity. Satan is a liar and the father of it. And doesn't the Bible say that only the pure in heart will see God? Exactly. And I'll tell you the reason why only the pure in heart will see. Because everybody on this earth, dead, alive, will see Jesus Christ when he steps out. They're going to see it. But it's going to take a pure heart to get into the kingdom of God. Amen. What makes you pure? Nothing but the mother. But to add on to that, making people doubt what the Word of God is, being skeptic of it, and then cherry picking and removing things, yeah. you start creating idols like that. How are you? And this not graven in you, it's just, I'm talking about bad ideologies, bad thoughts. <laughs> Bad perceptions and point of views and, and walks of life. You either take the whole thing or none of it. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are you going to chapter 2 next Sunday, Lord's will? I have no objection to that. <laughs> <laughs> now please pray for one another. Because it's going to take one another to help each other stand. Mm -hmm. And you'll find it. You're going to rely on things that you thought you'd never rely on. You'll rely on. We're definitely going to have to get to a point where we're in one mind and agreement and accord. Exactly. Exactly. We will have to get in the Pentecostal what I'll just put it that way. And not cut in corners. Not be blunt and go on. It's going to have to be a whole lot of walk with that talk. <laughs> Brother Bishop, you want to take up our, our testimonies? Lord, we'll come back to you all tonight. Hey, Lana, let's have church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Bishop. morning and I'm glad we kind of deviated from the, the normal format and program. Amen, brother. So yeah. It's it's good to be able to sit back, you know, read the scriptures, learn something from it. It's good to fellowship. Yeah. I'm just happy to be here this morning. There's no better place to be than right here in the house of God. Amen. Amen.
God for being here. I thank Him for His mercy this morning. I thank Him for his, those little children that cheer this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. I'd rather have them sitting on the aisle than sitting on the aisle. Has anybody else got a place to mount it for the Lord? Well, I just thank you this morning. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.